You ever get that annoying message on your computer that you're running out of storage or space? Today on Mackie Tech, we're going to talk about that and ways that we can alleviate that with using an external hard drive. Stay tuned. If you think of your computer's hard drive, sort of like your garage where you store all of your files, then you're on the right track. When you run out of storage in your garage, you can either get rid of files or boxes, or you need to find another place to store all of your boxes. Computer hard drives these days are measured in gigabytes and terabytes. A gigabyte is about a thousand megabytes. A terabyte is about a thousand gigabytes. Now to put megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes into perspective, your smartphone, when it takes your pictures. The pictures are generally anywhere from two to three megabytes, depending on the quality. Next, let's take a look at external hard drives. This guy. Let's take a look at what this does when it's actually on a computer and ways we can help to manage the storage on it. Okay, so here is the external hard drive that we're going to be playing with a little bit here. It connects to the computer with this USB. My Mac cannot accommodate this type of port, so we're going to use an adapter, and I'll show you that in just a second. But I want to show you what this hard drive would look like um, if it was naked. Because this, as it stands, is an external hard drive. And the only reason why it's external is because it has this little plastic covering on it. So if I were to take off this plastic covering, this is what it would look like without the plastic covering. It has this little connections, um, and that allows it to talk to the computer uh, when it's inside. When you want to use it outside the computer, you put what they call an enclosure, and then it connects to the computer with this little cable, and it works the same way. Uh, here is the adapter I mentioned before, and we're gonna take this USB cable, and we're gonna plug it right into this orange port here in the back, it doesn't matter, I can plug it in any one of these, but I'm just gonna plug it into here because I know it's a little bit faster. And then I'm gonna plug in this into my MacBook. So here we are back at my MacBook. And we can see here we have the Mac hard drive here. Let's plug in that hard drive and see what happens. And there we go. We'll right click on it and we'll go to get info. And we have down here, we have the capacity. You see where it has about 500 gigabytes. I'm using about 60 or so. If we close that out and we highlight it again, we'll go over to the right here, all the way to the right. And you can see where it says removable. And that essentially means that the Mac knows that it's an external hard drive. So that's how the hard drive works. We'll just double click on it and we can go to right click and create a folder. We can name it my folder and we can put documents in it. We can put uh, pictures in it. We can put pretty much whatever we want into it. So it functions just like our normal hard drive. One thing that Mac is kind of picky about is that you can't just unplug these things. I mean, you can. To my experience, it doesn't really matter, but you should always right click and click on eject, or you can click on this little button up here, which is also the eject button. Click on that and that will eject the drive and you can unplug it safely. So now that we've seen what an external hard drive looks like on our Mac, Let's take a look at the Macintosh hard drive that the computer comes with. Uh, we'll take a look at the storage that's available and ways we can help manage the storage to make sure we have enough. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the hard drive. We're gonna right click and go to manage storage. And what we're looking at here, and I wanted to emphasize how much space the actual operating system takes up. So we'll hover over these two little gray areas here. And we're at the top here where it says that there is 500 gigabytes that it comes with. And I have almost 340 left. And I have a couple gray areas here. One is, this is, I know this is system files. And this is the Mac OS. The Mac OS takes up about 20 gigabytes worth of space of the 500 gigabytes. So that's not that much. That's about average for an operating system to take up, maybe a little less. If we wanted to manage that storage, we can go down... Right here, I'll move myself out of the way, and we have 16.1 gigabytes in applications, and that's anything from macOS Numbers, uh, Pages app, anything that you use to do your daily tasks. There's a couple other things that I use in here for development purposes, music creation, but there's a lot of different things on here that you can kind of tweak if you are running out of storage. Certainly don't delete anything on here if you're not sure about what it is. The main way to get rid of unwanted applications, I'm gonna go back to my finder here on applications, and you can see all the different apps that I have on here. And all I would do is if you don't want something on your computer anymore and you're sure you're not using it, but essentially what you would do is you would right click on it and click on move the trash. I'm not gonna do that here, but you would click on move the trash. And then that would essentially delete the application 
from your hard drive. And the same thing if you have a lot of documents that you don't want, uh, you go to the documents folder or maybe a lot of times stuff that you download hides in the downloads folder. Uh, so those are just some quick ideas you can go to if you do want to eliminate things that you're no longer using on your Mac. You don't need a cleaner. I will say that there are a lot of uh, Macintosh cleaners that are purported to work for removing applications and cleaning up files and that type of thing. The Mac is pretty efficient. It doesn't need stuff like that. As long as you know where your apps are, and again, I'm in the Finder. If you're in the Finder, you just go over to Applications, and it's right there. You can go and see which different applications that you have that you don't want anymore. Uh, that's the best way to get rid of them. Now that we've seen a hard drive in real life and how it operates on a computer, let's take a look at some online options if we were to buy an external hard drive or an internal hard drive and take a look at the different pricing that's available. Okay, so we are on Amazon.com and we have two different hard drives that we're looking at here. So I wanted to emphasize the differences between the two and we're not going to get into a lot of detail on these, but long story short, these are both Western digital hard drives or storage drives, you could say is more accurate. This one is a, what they call an SSD drive. And basically what that means is that it is a solid state. It's a, and it doesn't have any moving parts. It has nothing mechanical in it. It's just a, basically a slab. And these are about the size of a deck of cards. Uh, they're a little bit thinner in terms of height, but in terms of width, that's about the size of them. And that's going for $184. I just grabbed this from Amazon. And this one is for $64. So you might be thinking, okay, why is the SSD so much more expensive? And it's because it doesn't have any moving parts. The This one on the left here is literally called a hard disk drive, even though you could get away with saying they're both hard drives. But if you want to get technical, uh, this one is a, a real hard disk drive. It operates the same way as a record player does. It has a little needle that will uh, hover over a magnetic disk and where it, that's where it writes and reads information from. It says a 7200 RPM class, and that's revolutions per minute. And that means that the magnetic disk spins around uh, 7,200 times per minute. That's how fast it is. So that's obviously faster than in your normal record player. But not to get into that too much, but it does have a lot of mechanical parts in it. These have been around for decades. Uh, they're very robust. They're quite reliable. But they are more prone to accidents, and they're not as reliable as an SSD, which will usually last you for a lot longer. But the SSDs, this one on the right, these are the ones that you'll find. Normally, you'll find them in laptops. My laptop has one. They'll find them in smartphones or at least a version of them in smartphones that are usually smaller than this. You will find these in desktops more, uh, but they're also sometimes in laptops. They have a, a smaller form factor of this version that can also be found in laptops. It depends on what you're looking for. If you want to save a little bit of money, you'd probably want to go with a hard disk drive that would save you quite a bit of money in terms of storage because they both store the same amount of information. They're just different mediums, if you will. So today we talked a little bit about what hard drives are and how they function. And we've saw a couple of examples on Amazon about what their pricing is and how they work on a Macintosh computer, as well as ways to manage your existing storage. In our next video, we're going to look at Apple's Time Machine, which comes with all Macs. And we're going to look at ways to use an external hard drive as as a backup destination for your important files and your documents. Uh, after that, we'll talk a little bit more about how this works on a PC. Anyway, wanted to make sure that we were all subscribed to Mackie Tech, your home for IT solutions. Don't forget to like this video and please provide any comments that you have, and we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody for watching.